Good everyone, welcome to this video. Today we have a review on the US Starter Pack. Now that I've finally got my hands on the Swedish one, if you saw the pinned comment in the Swedish, um, well, the, the French and the Swedish Premium Showcase series, because I left a pinned comment there explaining that I picked up the pack. It's just so I don't have to, like, re record the video or, like, put that in. It's just easier to put in a pinned comment what I got. So, yeah. Anyway. So, recently I've picked up the Swedish Starter Pack and I've decided to now get through and start reviewing all of the packs. Now, of course, each individual pack has its own flaws and also its benefits. And we're starting off with the probably most, well, the most well-known one, the US Starter Pack. So, I'm going to be doing this a little bit differently. So there's going to be no gameplay, however, in the description of this video, there are going to be two links. One is to the review of this plane, the Rasmussen's P36A, and the other will be to the review of the M3A1 US Marine Corps. Now for those who are going to be watching all of the starter pack reviews, please do note, I don't have every vehicle at the moment reviewed. And obviously the tanks are going to take some time as well because obviously my old PC can't really do tank videos that much anymore. But still, once I'm able to, you will have reviews on those vehicles. So let's get into the review of the pack and let's take a look at the items that you get. So in this pack, it costs $5.99 US dollars. Obviously this can convert into your local currency differently and you get seven days you get i believe 40 days of premium or seven days one of the two i can never remember which you also get 120,000 sl and typically you get two premiums with these packs but not this one this is already a flaw with the u.s starter pack now, sure, you do get a very iconic plane, this being the P-36A, flown by Philip Rasmussen, who, fun little story, he actually got out of bed when the Pearl Harbor attack was happening, in his pyjamas, didn't even put on a flight suit or anything like that, strapped a Colt 45 to his side, ran to his plane, which was this one, a P-36A, shot down an A-6M-0, and I believe he damaged some others, but I can't confirm that. Was hit over 500 times and still managed to get back to base safely. I believe his plane is still in a museum somewhere. At least, at least I think so. I can't say I've ever been to the USA. I do want to though. Now of course, in the game, this plane is no different to the P-36A in the tech tree. But why is this thing not a premium, is what confuses me. All of the other starter packs have premiums, and it's very unusual to see this. This is the only pack that doesn't have a premium aircraft. And I know that doesn't seem like much of a negative, but it's still a negative. Second point. The P-36A in 3-0 matches when you take it into Grand Forces with the M3A1 US Marine Corps, which I would assume you will, it isn't that great. It does do the job, but there's better options, and with this thing not being able to carry any sort of bombs or rockets, that's another negative point in this aircraft's favour, because it doesn't carry any form of ordnance, the 50 cal is good at top downing some tanks, but with only one, it's not really worth the effort. And you don't get that much ammunition anyway, so that's another negative point on the US starter pack. But the plane itself, I love it a lot. I love the P36s. It has great handling, great maneuverability, its top speed is decent for its BR, and it will certainly get the job done. But as I said, if you're taking it alongside your M3A1, there is a chance it will become a little bit outdated. But, of course, it's not all negative. There is some positive points about this plane. It's just 
most of it is negative because of where it's well, a how it's implemented and b how it's paired up with of course armament is the same as the regular p36 it has 150 caliber and 130 caliber the engine is the same the, the airframe is the same the flight model is the same it's literally just the numbers on it that's all you need to know but as i said no ground strike capability is a negative point at least to me because in my opinion you should give a new player something with cast opportunity now then let's move on to the tank which this thing is one of my favorites. This is the M3A1 US Marine Corps. This is no different to a regular M3A1 in the tech tree. However, the only real difference you need to know is, well differences I should say, is this skin that you can see on the vehicle and this bugged out US Marine Corps decal, which I, I think it's bugged. Yeah, it's bugged. I thought so. But it's a very bugged decal at the minute. I'm not sure what's wrong with it, but it just seems like it's double layered. But this tank combines good armor for a light tank, great maneuverability, and overall good firepower. But at 3.0, the 37mm on this tank does start to fall a little short, and that's what lets it down. Whilst it is a very good tank, it's more reliant on down tiers than up tiers. But if you can assemble a pretty decent lineup of M3A1 Stuart, M3 Stuart, maybe bring along the M3 GMC, M13 GMC, MGMC, and then maybe bring your Hawk that you got, that will make a pretty decent lineup. But of course, that's your personal preference. You don't have to. That's just a lineup that I would probably use. But it's just so you can get as much use out of this tank as possible. It doesn't have a particularly great SL or RP gain. But remember, it is a rank 1 tank. This isn't exactly going to get you very far. This is just to start you off. But this is easily one of the more fun low tier premiums that you can get. And this is definitely the selling point of this pack is this tank. But of course, it's not all sunshine and butterflies. As I mentioned about the firepower, it's very good for its BR. However, it's still a 37mm. In an up tier, it's going to be much harder for you to compete. And even at your own tier, you're going to be fighting stuff that might resist the 37mm to some extent. As a result, I recommend maining this round, the M51B1-B2. This is a 37mm round that weighs just under a kilogram has 10, well, 87 millimeters at 10 meters penetration, has overall good angle penetration, and retains its penetration of at least 60 millimeters at around 1,000 meters. It's also got a great muzzle velocity and is really forgiving to new players, which is really the selling point of this pack. It's just how forgiving the tank is. So overall, would I recommend buying this pack? Um, I'd probably say yes. I'd probably wait for a discount on it though, purely because you don't get two premiums with it. But if you can get this thing half off like I did for like three pounds, obviously that's in my currency. This is definitely a pack that is worth your money. But like I said, it's going to be quickly apparent that A, the tank's going to get outdated, but that's that's natural. You're moving up in the tech tree after all. But also the plane will become horribly outdated by the time you get into 3-0 matches, which will probably happen. So do make sure to take that into consideration. If you're looking for a plane to replace the P-36, however, I have a few suggestions for you. One is the SBD Dauntless. This is a very nice plane and is definitely very capable in ground forces. Another one, whilst it is a bit of a boat, this is the TBF Avenger, and it gets the job done in that regard. If you're looking for a bit of a firepower upgrade from your P-36A, I'd recommend getting the P-36C. If you're looking for something that maybe is a bit more niche, maybe try the TBD Devastator or the sb 2 Free Vindicator. Those are my suggestions anyway. As for a premium aircraft to back it up, which if you, if you want to of course, my recommendation is right here, the B-10B. Whilst it is not the most amazing bomber, 
it carries a 2,000 pound bomb. So that that is personally what I would suggest if you need a cast aircraft and you want to spend a little bit more money on top of this pack. But as I said, that's a negative point. Why is this plane not a premium? And why does it have no CAS? So that pretty much concludes the review here. I hope you enjoyed today's review on the US starter pack. Next one will be the German pack, then the Russian pack, the British pack, etc. But obviously, we'll cross those bridges as we come to it. But anyway, I'm going to let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's review on the US starter pack, and I will see you all on the next one.